Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Good morning and welcome to the show. This is Andy Webb with Lifestyles Unlimited. And as always, we are working on your financial freedom. Well, hey, I missed you earlier in the week. I hope you had a Merry Christmas, uh, celebrated well. And obviously, we're heading very soon into the the new year, right? And this, in fact, this is my last weekend of 2020 to, to do the show. So time to roll on into 2021, isn't it? You know, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm, I, we wound up, we weren't sure what to do for Christmas. Do we, do we go down? Do we visit family? Do we, do we hunker down? Do we, do we stay put? We, we wound up rolling on down to Austin. I'm coming to you live, in fact, from the, from my in-laws, uh, in, in, in or near Austin. And, um, you know, we, 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 we just wanted to have the, our son around his grandparents and uh, they've gotten the vaccine. So they're, I guess they're good to go. And, uh, you know, we brought him down, loaded the, the vehicle with the presents we had planned to open up in, in, in the Dallas area. And well, here we are. And it, it was just a, a pleasure to see him with his, you know, with his grandparents doing, doing their thing and, uh, making out, <laughs> making out like a bandit, that little guy, my wife and I, on the other hand, what do we do? It's, we, we, we've kind of, matured into those more practical gifts. I'm wearing a pair of socks with a hole in them, for example. They'll be going on, on the wayside here because what did I get? That practical practical gift that every dad wants, that bag of socks. <laughs> you know, that's where I am. That's where she is. And, and we're okay with that. And, and you know what a really practical gift is? A really practical gift. And you may have to get this one for yourself. Put it in your, your, own, your own stocking. It's real estate. It, it, it's the gift it's it's a practical gift, obviously, but it's it's the gift that really does keep on giving. And that's what I want to talk about on today's show. I want to have some fun with this. And we're going to talk about five, even six ways that a, that a good real estate investment is going to keep on giving into your pocket over the years. Okay. And in fact, let me just tell you a quick story. Years ago, this doesn't relate to, to a Christmas gift, but um, we had just wrapped up a project in the mid cities in, in Dallas Fort Worth, uh, a house. Uh, gotten the you know gotten all the rehab done, gotten through the renovations, the refinance, gotten the new resident into place, and we we're actually leaving from meeting that resident. And one street over, what did we see? We saw a for sale by owner, a Fizbo. Someone trying to go around the realtors, you know, save some bucks and, and market their own house. So we gave the guy a call. It turned out to be another investor. He, he came right over. We went in, looked at the house. It looked really good. It, it looked really good. So my wife got the house under contract and she set the closing date for my birthday. So that was going to be her quote unquote gift to me. Now that, that deal didn't work out. And I'll tell you a little bit later in the show why we ditched that contract. And maybe more importantly for you, how we got our earnest money back. Because the seller didn't want to let it go. He was giving us some problems. So we, we had to fight a little bit to get that, that earnest money that we put down back into our pockets. And, and I'll tell you how that went. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you may get into a contract and, and you just have to get back out. You know, the, you, you go in and you realize the deal's not quite where you thought it was going to be. You do that because you learn, right? You get educated and you understand how to evaluate the deal more closely as you do your due diligence. But um, we did have to get out of that. And I'll tell you about that a little later. The focus on the show, though, is real estate as a, a gift that's going to keep giving. Okay. What does it give you ultimately? Where does it take you? Well, it takes you to that financial freedom that I opened the show with, right? We're working on your financial freedom. We want to get you there. You know, it helps you create options in, in your life when you have a portfolio of income producing assets, right? It does things that you may not have realized that, that they're going to do for you, these, these houses or, or apartments that we, that we invest in. And, and, and ultimately, the cash flow, we'll talk about that. that. That's going to help you retire in five years or less. We see it at, at Lifestyles Unlimited all the time. So this is, it really is the gift that keeps giving. My wife and I, we've been single family investors for uh, over eight years now. We got our start with Lifestyles Unlimited back in, in we joined as, as, as Financial Freedom Program members back in March of 2012 after hearing this very program on the radio for I don't know how long, far too long. <laughs> you know, what's the, most real estate investors' re biggest regret is not starting sooner, and that, that is certainly mine. But uh, we became members and, 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 and went down that single family path. We, we, this year, finally, we, we, we've started shifting into multifamily. So we're going we're gonna to talk about about five ways that that an investment in a single family house is going to keep on giving. 
Now, as Lifestyles members, we do also invest in in apartments, in in multifamily, and there's they share those those traits, right? Those five ways. But there, and in fact, there's a sixth way that real estate keeps on giving when we're talking about apartments. That's really really powerful, and uh, we'll, we'll look at that. We'll look at that as as well. So to start with, I think for a lot of people, the biggest, the most important thing is going to be the cash flow that you're going to get out of this deal once you take it down. Once you get it, once you get it stabilized, right? We're typically talking about stabilizing apartments, right? Big multifamily, as well as single family houses. Sometimes they're a wreck <laughs> when we buy them and stabilizing those might simply mean renovating those, but we get them fixed up and we get those uh, rented to, to great residents. Okay. And cash flow is simply you, you collect your rent every month. Let's say it's $1,200. Right, you pay any expenses out of that. Typically, your PITI, which is principal and interest, taxes and insurance, the mortgage, right, escrowed. Maybe property manager. A lot, a lot of single family investors that I know are doing this very passively by hiring a property manager to to manage their portfolio, whether that's a couple of houses, ten, twenty, thirty, or or more. Others like myself, we we self manage, right? You you can go either way, but if you do have a property manager, obviously you're you're paying them out of that rent as well. And we have great property managers on our vendor list at Lifestyles Unlimited. We've done some shows with them in the past. And any shows that you may have missed or any part of this show you miss and want to come back and catch, you can go to lifestylesunlimited.com and uh, click on the radio tab for that. But cash flow at the end of the day, it's that gross rent net of those expenses leaves a net cash amount that we are keeping in our pocket every month. And that's what we want to build up. That's what ultimately is going to lead to that retirement in five years or less, when you've built up enough of that cash flow to where you have met your expenses, let's say you're spending $4,000 a month as a family, and on average, right, on average in Texas, a house is going to throw off about $400 per month net, right? That's what you're keeping. So you just need to build up a portfolio of 10 houses. I know it seems like a lot. We have folks that do that in a single year. We have folks that do that in a single year, and you, you can do it too. It depends on where you're starting. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the cash flow side of things and how you can give yourself a raise. Did you get a raise in 2020? <laughs> Are you expecting one in 2021? So stay tuned. We're going to get into that. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. This is Andy Webb, and we'll be right back. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. This is Andy Webb, and today on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, we're taking a look at the gift that keeps on giving. Of course, I'm talking about real estate. That's what we do. We invest in single family houses. We invest in multifamily communities, apartment communities to build our financial freedom. And there are five ways that real estate is going to keep on giving when you invest in that first single family house. Six ways when you invest in that first multifamily deal. And I'm not saying you've got to buy a whole apartment complex by yourself. We get together with like-minded investors. We pool our resources in order to take down this, this multi-million dollar asset, right? Cash flowing asset. And that's the first way that real estate keeps on giving is that cash flow, right? I did a show earlier in the year where we took a look at the stimulus checks that we all got as part of the CARES Act earlier in the year. Thought we were about to get another one, right? So was it $600? Is it going to be $2,000? I don't know. They can't figure it out either, right? But that was a one-time event. The beauty with real estate is that it keeps on giving. It's not a one-time thing. If you build up four houses, you're collecting anywhere from $1,200 to maybe $1,800 a month in net rent. That's net cash in your pocket. And that just keeps repeating, that is the goose that laid the golden egg right there. It's spitting out a golden egg for you every single month. And that's the beauty of it. Now, hey, let me give out the number if you've got any questions today. This is still a live show. My last weekend to do the show, in fact, this year, 2020. So the number here is 855-497-4335. Again, 855-497-4335. Or feel free to send me an email to askandy at luinc.com. Again, that is askandy at luinc.com. 
com. And if you want to catch any of the prior shows, if I reference something in here from an earlier show, you can go find those in our archives. Go to lifestylesunlimited.com. Click on the radio tab. Uh, there's a podcast button down there and you can catch all of the prior shows. And we talked last week on a show about some of the comic strips I've been reading with my son. And, and we, he and I sat down and watched the Charlie Brown Christmas special. And in that special, there's a scene where, where Lucy, the psychiatrist, right, with, for her five cents is speaking with Charlie Brown and they're talking about Christmas and she re reflects on the fact that she never gets what she wants. She doesn't want clothes or a bike or toys or any of that stuff. And when Charlie Brown asks her, what do you want? She says, real estate. <laughs> so she's clearly on the, on the path there. I just got a tremendous kick out of that. And again, we'll look at those ways that, that, that real estate keeps on giving. I want you to keep in mind as well that Del Walmsley, he is the founder of Lifestyles Unlimited. He founded Lifestyles 30 years ago. So he's been doing this for a very long time, and he's got three rules to investing that you want to keep in mind. We'll touch on these as well as we go through this show. Number one, rule number one, don't lose money. Okay, we'll talk about that actually here in just a moment. Rule number two, it has to cash flow. This ties into what we're talking about right now. And rule number three, you can't get rich slow. So focusing more actually on rule number two, it has to cash flow. That's what we want to take down, our houses that are going to cash flow, or apartments that are going to cash flow. If you're on the coasts and that doesn't work, that's not a good place to invest. I actually met with a buddy of mine yesterday, went out to a local open air place and, and enjoyed a couple of beverages together. And, and I asked him, he's done a lot of alternative investments. He, he was in and now is out of cryptocurrency. He, he was in oil, got out of that. He, he's been in and out of any number of things. I asked him, why didn't you ever get into real estate? He's here in Austin. He said, it's too expensive here. He, he's missed the message I've been trying to send him <laughs> over the years, which is you don't have to invest where you live. You can invest further afield. So if you are on the coasts and it's just too darn expensive, come to Texas. We invest in Dallas-Fort Worth. The numbers make sense. San Antonio, Houston, some of the outlying areas. If you're getting into apartments, it's a totally different game too. You know, a place like Austin still is in play. So, you, you know, live where you want, but invest where you want. As far as those alternative investments, what did he say about cryptocurrency? He, he, he confessed. He said, it's just pure speculation. <laughs> That's all it is. There is no cash flow. There is no cash flow. And he got out. He lost money. We, we're looking for that cash flow. That is the way that the real estate number one is going to keep on giving, you know, and like I said, Dell, Dell has his three rules to investing and number two, it, it has to have cash flow. And I, you know, I closed the last segment asking, you know, do you, do you get a raise every year? Did you get a raise in 2020? This is what I want you to think about. This is what I want you to think about in a normal year. What sort of percentage do you typically get? So forget about 2020, forget about maybe what are, you know, what may or may not happen in 2021. In a normal year, what, what kind of raise do you get? Is it probably something like 2%, maybe, maybe 3%, right? You know, in the past, that's what I've seen in terms of raises was about 3%. So let's run with it. Let's, let's assume it's 3%. If you're in a job right now that's paying you $50,000 per year, what is 3%? That raise is just going to be $1,500, 1500 now, if you're in a, in a household, maybe you're making a thousand, you know, a hundred thousand a year, maybe that's 3000 per year. Here's what happens when you add a house to your portfolio by comparison. Average cash flow, as I mentioned, is about $400 here in Texas. We see a little lower, we see a little higher, but on average it's coming out around $400. That's $4,800 a year. Let's just call it 5,000. Okay. So if I buy a single family house, I take an immediate $5,000 jump in my quote unquote pay, right? If I'm looking at that fella making 50 K per year, that is a 10% raise. 10%. If you're that household earning 100K per year, it's, it's a 5% increase. Beating the pants off of what that employer is electing to, to, to hand out, right? To give you, right? And, if, and here's the thing too, you don't have to stop at just one house. I see a lot of investors there, first time investors, a little bit nervous. It's hard to pull the trigger the first time, but they finally do it. And after they take down that first house, all of a sudden they're, they're under contract on the second one and then the third one. So that $5,000 jump in pay per year is suddenly $10,000 or $15,000. That's almost 33% of that 50 k salary, isn't it? Those are big numbers. Those are big numbers, and it keeps paying you that money every month. So our favorite way that real estate keeps giving back is that cash flow. That's what's going to retire us. That's what's going to get us to the finish line. But equally as important, remember Dell's number one rule, don't lose money. That takes me to the next way that real estate is going to keep giving back. Now, this one's going to take a little bit of, of processing for you, maybe, but I'm talking about equity capture. Ooh, uh, equity capture. Okay, that's because we buy right. We're, we're buying below market or we're buying a deal, an asset that needs work, so we're getting it at a discount. Sounds like a one-time event. I get that. I get that. I'll tell you how it keeps giving back here in just a second, but that's what we're doing. Understand that equity capture is buying 
below market essentially. So let's say we pick up a house for $50,000. We put $20,000 of work in it to bring it back up to snuff, but it values at 100,000 at the end of the day. We've just captured 30K in equity. All right, when it comes to Dell's rule of investing, don't lose money, that is a huge buffer for us. So if, if, if down the line we need to divest that asset for some reason, we've got equity bought up front, we're not gonna lose money. If we need to sell that house at a slight discount because we need to go fast because we wanna get into some other investment, maybe there's a great multifamily deal, we wanna leave a little bit of meat on the bone selling to the next investor, we can do that. So let's talk just a little bit about how we buy a house as Lifestyles members typically, right? So there, there are different ways to, different roads to Rome, of course, but conventionally, typically when we're buying a house, we're buying one that, as I mentioned, needs needs some work, right? It needs some work. And because of that, we've got a very unique process that's going to allow us to get into that deal and actually get into that deal for much less out of pocket than we would have been had we gone the straight conventional route in taking down that asset. Now, I hear the music kicking on. We're going to head into a break. When we come back, I want to get into that process so you understand how exactly we are capturing equity in that process, and then we'll talk about how it gives back down the line. And now a word on retirement from Del Wamsley. The average person thought they'd retire at 59 and a half, 60, then they said 64, then it was 65, then it was 66, then all of a sudden they jump right to 70, 70 is the new 59, 70 is the new 64, then it was, you know, hey, most people are going to work all the way into their 80s. Do you really want to work in your 80s, or would you like to retire in five years or less? Find out how on Lifestyles Unlimited's live online free workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. This is Andy Webb, and today on the show we're talking about the gift of real estate and and the ways that it keeps on giving because it keeps on giving. It's not a one-time thing. You buy that house, that cash flow comes in the door. Every month, that's what retires us. That's what gives us a beautiful raise, right? In the face of everything else that's going on. You probably didn't get one in 2020. Maybe maybe we won't get one in 2021. You buy one single family house, you add $5,000 per year to your bottom line. That is a great raise, probably percentage-wise much better than you're ever going to see in that J-O-B. Uh, we're talking about, uh, that's the number one way that, that real estate keeps giving back. We're talking about the number two way, equity capture. Before we continue, I do want to give you the number here. If you've got questions, it's 855 855- Four nine seven four three three five, or send me an email to askandy at l-u-i-n-c dot com. And I also want to give you a website that I want you to go check out. Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. Uh, we do free workshops as an introduction to Lifestyles Unlimited, as an introduction to investing in single family houses and multifamily communities. And we've got those going on constantly and and live and online right now. When I first went, we went to a a seminar room, sat down with, you know, a number of other folks, not doing that (laughs) live and in person right now, but we are doing those live online and we've got one coming up. You can get one last look at our free workshop this year in 2020 before we roll into 2021, December 29th. That's Tuesday. We've got one coming up in the evening. Go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. It's just an hour and a half, and you can learn a lot more about what we do as investors, You know how we find that financial freedom. It's, it's, a tr- it's tremendous. So uh, we're talking now about the ways that real estate keeps giving back, right? It is the gift uh, that keeps on giving. Cash flow, number one, is the biggest thing. Equity capture number two, you know, Dell Walmsley, he has, he has his, his three rules of investing. Never lose money is number one. Number two, it must cash flow, right? And in terms of never losing money, we just want to buy with a buffer is what it means, right? We want to buy right. Don't overpay, <laughs> okay? And how do we buy a house at Lifestyles? Well, think about the last time you drove down the road and you notice that grass in that one yard that's a little bit overly tall. Maybe there's a boarded up window. Roof looks like it's shot, right? It's just in general disrepair, you may not notice those things, but if you start to look for them, you'll see they're out there. There's, there's a lot of them, you know, and those are what we're targeting, right? Those houses that need work. And because they need work, we're able to go in and get those at a discount. In my earlier example, I said, maybe we pick it up for five, uh, $50,000 and maybe it needs $20,000 of work. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to buy low. We're going to put in the work needed to get that thing back up to full value. Let's say the values for the neighborhood are $100,000. 
we buy it for 50, we put 20 K into it. We'll have some, some financing uh, and, and closing costs. Let's, let's add that in there as five K let's call that 75 K all in. Well, we've just created $25,000 in equity that we have at the end of the day. Yeah. But Andy, that you, you, the show's talking about, you know, the gift that keeps on giving, how does that keep giving? That sounds like a one-time event. You're right. That's a one-time event that gets that into our pocket. That's, that's that safety valve. That's going to protect you if you need to sell for some reason sooner than expected or whatever. But it's also going to help you build your net worth. And eventually, whether that's in two years, three years, five years, you're going to cash out that equity and you're going to roll that equity into more properties, which is going to garner more cash flow, which is going to, going to garner more equity capture. And it just starts to multiply. You start to see the effects of the snowball or the cash flow snowball. You just start turning faster and faster and faster. That equity capture absolutely plays into that. It's pivotal. So that's number two way that real estate keeps on giving. Number three way also ties into equity. You know, we, 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 we take that asset as I described and we fix it up and eventually we move a family in there, right? We find great residents and we follow the motto, motto at, at Lifestyles Unlimited, best product, best price. That's why we go in and fix that place up. Anything that we think is going to need any repairs in the next couple of years, go and fix it now. It's going to make your life easier in the long run as a landlord. Right. So we, we put the best product on the market. We marketed it at the best price. We're not trying to, 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 to gouge people out there. there. There is a shortage right now of both retail homes for sale as well as rental units in, in the housing stock. But we're not going to go out there and try to gouge people. We give them the best price and they're going to get in there in a hurry. We're going to find the best people. Right. And what happens then? Well, think back to what we talked about in terms of cash flow. They're paying that mortgage or excuse me, they're paying that rent every month. And out of that, we're paying the mortgage. And as part of that mortgage, payment, we're paying down the principal, we're paying principal and we're paying interest. So the number three way that real estate keeps giving is through the equity buildup that occurs every month when we pay down that mortgage. And think about this. So you're focused on the monthly cash flow, right? I'm, I'm typically focused on the cash flow for almost when I'm, when I'm looking at an asset, cause that's what I want to build. But in the background, you've got this principal pay down in operation as well. So let's say you pick up that house that gets that average $400 a month in cash flow. Right now, because of values, because of the appreciation we've seen, the, the deals that we're closing tend to be a little bit higher than maybe what I saw eight years ago. Because of that, my, I went back and checked my more recent deals. My principal pay down is closing in on $200 a month. So I'm realizing $400 in absolute cash, but in the background, I'm, a, I'm earning another $200 in equity every single month, essentially $600 per month that I'm collecting as part of this asset. So that, that, that earlier example that we talked about that 3% raise that you might get in a normal year on $50,000, that's $1,500, right? Before taxes, don't forget about taxes. Well, with that equity buildup, you've given yourself another raise. So in this example, if I'm paying down about $200 per month, that's $2,400 a year. That is already by itself a 4.8% raise on top of that $50,000 salary. Now factor in the cash flow, as well as that equity buildup, you're at 14%. Buying one single house, you have given yourself a 14% raise. Where else can you do that? And again, eventually here too, you're going to, you're going to cash out that equity and you're going to roll that into more properties, roll that into more cash flow. And like I said, it is the gift that keeps on giving. So in terms of yield, I like to look at this from time to time. You know, we look at our cash flow. We typically talk about cash on cash return. You know, we might be anywhere from eight to 10 to 15 to 20, maybe 30% on a single house, right? We, we've got our home run deals out there that, that beat the heck out of that. I like to look for, you know, if you amass enough of those singles, those base hits, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to do wonderfully. You're going to retire in no time, but occasionally you're going to get those home run deals, but let's focus on those base hits where you're cash flowing $400 a month. Maybe you've got 20 K into the deal, maybe 25 right? We're talking about a 20% return right there. On top of that, again, to go back to the equity buildup, operating quietly in the background, that's going to be yielding alone by itself, another five to 10% return. So the point is you've got two, two things in play here that you need to think about the more visible, the more known, the cash that you want to see every day to live off of, right? To build up, to offset your expenses, to replace your income so that you can retire. But in the background, you're building that wealth as well. So you've captured equity and now you've got equity buildup moving alongside it. Number three way that, that real estate continues to give. Number four, appreciation. And this is moving in tandem with that equity buildup as well. Just dumb, simple appreciation. Think of it maybe as inflation. Prices are going to go up. The value of real estate tends to double every 20 years. 
that's appreciation. If you took, if you want to get a, a feel for what to expect in, in 2021, Forbes.com had a, a good article, very, very long in terms of, you know, their, their standard fare. But uh, the title of the article is experts predict what the housing market will be like in 2021. So if you want to get a feel for appreciation, I'm just going to look at one of these. Danielle Hale is the, uh, the chief economist at realtor.com. She's expecting a growth just in general sales of 7%. In other words, we're going to have 7% more homes sold in 2021 than in 2020. But here's the important thing as regards appreciation. She's expecting prices, and this is nationally, okay, so you need to look at where you're at, of course, but she's expecting prices to rise another 5.7% on top of what we saw in 2020. And 2020 was phenomenal. 2020 was phenomenal. I have some interesting numbers from the Texas A&M University Real Estate Center. I'll hit those as soon as we come back from the break. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Stay tuned. One of the things I'd like to get across is that your whole life you wanted to make a change, right? But you've never had the time. This might be it because we have online education that you can get involved in. We're now going to bring the free workshop to the entire country and really the world. Anybody who is interested can participate in that. We're going to live stream that free workshop and have people online with you on the live stream, talking with you, answering questions, interacting. You're really going to get a great feel for the lifestyles community from this. And you can register for that. So if you want to find out about us, this is a great way to take a look at us and what we do. Lifestyles Unlimited has been helping people succeed since 1990. Join us for our free online real estate workshop and learn the seven principles we teach to run our businesses and provide for our families. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. That's lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. back with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. Welcome back to the show. This is Andy Webb. And today on the show, we're talking about the five ways that as a gift, real estate is the gift that keeps on giving. Maybe a gift you have to get for yourself. Not going to find that in your stocking necessarily. My wife and I, over the years, we've become more and more practical with our gifts to each other. And uh, I, this would be a great one for me. If you're listening. <laughs> so in fact, years ago, my wife did try to uh, line up the closing on a single family house with my birthday. So that was the plan. Make that the quote unquote gift. Unfortunately, I told you at the start of the show that that deal uh, fell through. We we were excited about it because it was one, one street over from a house we just finished uh, working on. And, you know, we walked it. It was a FISBO for sale by owner. So we called the owner, turned out to be another investor, you know, walked the place with him. Looked great. It was a pier and beam house, 50s build. This was classic lipstick on a pig, and it looked great. That lipstick was beautiful, but what did we do? We got under contract, and we did work with a, a lifestyles agent, Ali, and um, she saved our bacon at the end of the game, right? So we, we got our inspector in there. We got our, our general contractor in there. We got our foundation company in there, probably most importantly, both the inspector and the foundation company went up under the house and it was a disaster. We tried to negotiate a lower price, of course, based on that information, but uh, the fellow wouldn't budge. And he also refused. We, we went ahead and entered this using the Trek, you know, one to four family sales contract standard promulgated form, right? It's, it's, it's a been approved by lawyers. We know that it's a good contract I and mean, it gives us an out when we pay an earn or excuse me, an option fee, which we did. But the guy was, he was unyielding. He was not going to give us back our money. He was trying this, he was trying that. And eventually, you know what happened? We said, look, we've got this inspection. We gave it to our realtor. She's going to give it to you. And as soon as she does that, you now have to disclose all of these problems. Initially, we got a seller's disclosure that checked unknown, foundation problems unknown, electrical problems check unknown, and so on and so forth. As soon as you have that inspection in your hands, you have leverage because as soon as you hand that over, that person is now informed. Perhaps they were not before, but you can now take that. And, and if they are <laughs> misbehaving down the line with the next potential purchaser, uh, they can get in a pretty deep water, especially if they are working with a realtor. As soon as your realtor hands that over to their realtor, that is known information that has to be shared. 
So typically they don't want that. They don't want that inspection. So as soon as we put that out there, said, here it comes, boom, back came our earnest money. We were done. So there, there, are, there are advantages to working with a realtor. We, we were less informed this was earlier in our, our career. We were not as knowledgeable. Uh, it's, it's a good thing to have a good teammate on your side that can help you like Lee did for us that, that, you know, oh, so many moons ago. So my, my birthday present did not come to fruition, but we'll, we'll keep on trying. So. Now we're talking about the ways that that gift keeps on giving when you do pick up that single family house or maybe an apartment complex with uh, fellow investors and the number four ways through appreciation. We've seen a ton of it over the years. And if you want to get an outlook on 2021, go to Forbes.com, uh, click on, there was an article they had called the uh, 2021 housing market predictions or, or experts rather experts predict that the housing market will, will, what that will look like in 2021. And at least one expert from realtor.com expects a 5.7% increase in prices. That is appreciation. So again, going back to your raise that you may or may not have gotten in 2020, may or may not expect in 2021, if you pick up a $100,000 asset today, by the end of 2021, it should have appreciated on average across the nation, right? 5.7%. You've just gained $5,700. You've given yourself yet another raise by virtue of that appreciation. And here's the thing. If you read through that article, you're going to see the common denominator here is low inventory is going to continue to be an issue. If I look here in Texas, we are at 2.1 months supply. Six months of supply is considered normal. There's just simply a lack of inventory that will continue to push up prices. And here's the other side of the coin. At some point, you might think prices will get too high, but those interest rates are also expected to stay low. Great for us when we pick up a cash flowing asset and lock in a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, but also great for retail buyers because they're able to buy more. Simply put, that lower rate for them equals greater affordability at a higher price point. So they're going to be able to continue to push those prices up as buyers as well. Um, another good source for information on the housing market, if you're interested, is the Texas A&M University Real Estate Center. I like to go here and check out their periodic reports. And they had a recent one. This was as of October. And just looking backwards for the year. Uh, so we're not looking forward like we were in the prior article, but we're looking backwards just so you know where we were and where we've come from. In Texas, the median home price grew 12% year over year. So that $100,000 house would have appreciated to $112,000. You would have gained $12,000 right there. Again, just through what I call dumb appreciation, it happens. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's like that equity buildup. It's in the background, but we benefit from that. In fact, in Texas of the major markets, you know, think Houston, think San Antonio, think Austin, think Dallas, think Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Fort Worth had the lowest amount of appreciation at a whopping 9.1%. So if you owned an asset there, probably not worth 100K, right? You probably started closer to 200K a year ago. It's now worth 218,000. You just picked up $18,000 doing next to nothing. What were you doing? You were collecting money every month from your resident, getting that cash flow in the door, building up that equity and enjoying this appreciation. So when we go in and buy a deal, we're not typically looking for appreciation. It is, understand, it is icing on the cake. Okay, I don't want you to speculate on that because who knows? It could be flat next year. It could, could dip a little bit. We'll see how things develop. But over the time, over time, you will enjoy that appreciation. And if you are an apartment investor, I mentioned there's a sixth way that we make money that we enjoy those, those benefits of real estate with apartments, which is through forced appreciation. We're not going to sit around and wait. We're going to effect appreciation by changing something on that asset. And this, goes, this ties in part to Dell's third rule of investing, which is you can't get rich slow. With houses, I have to sit and wait for that appreciation to naturally occur. That's because of how they're valued based on comparable sales. Apartments are not valued based on comparable sales. They are valued based on the cash flow. So if you can get in there and do a small change, you can really, really effect some change in value. For example, let's say you pick up a, you and your investor peers pick up a, a 50 unit complex and do a simple $25 per month increase in rent across all units. That's going to yield a $250,000 increase in value. I don't want to get into the, the details behind that, but that simple $25 per month yields you $250,000 in value. That's not the only place where you're going to make so, those changes either, is it? You're going to rub back or, or, or charge back the utilities on a prorated basis if they're not individually metered, right? There are a number of things. There are, there are a lot of different ways that we can go into an apartment community and affect change and force appreciation. You can't get rich slow. You want to really move fast. One way you do that is by buying those apartment complexes and affecting or forcing that appreciation. 
So back to the ways that real estate keeps on giving the the fifth way in our in our standard fare for the single family home buyer, and this applies for apartment uh, buyers as well, is simply through the tax advantages. They're tremendous. The tax code favors us as real estate investors. Uh, among other things, we pay low to no taxes on our cash flow. Big ticket item there that helps us is something called depreciation. We're allowed to effectively expense a piece of that property every year on paper. It's not an actual hit to our cash flow. So we keep our cash in our pocket, but we depreciate that, that asset and offset that cash flow in the eyes of the IRS. And we pay lower taxes or no taxes on that cash flow. I have seen this every year. We work with a CPA. I don't try to do my own taxes. And we enjoy the benefits of that depreciation. On top of that, we do put mortgages, like I said, onto our properties. And if that principal and interest payment, 200 of which is going to principal, some big chunk of that, I'll tell you, it's a big chunk, is going towards the interest side. And I expense that as well. So again, that, that resident is paying that, paying for that asset for me. Keeps on giving. You know, some renovations that you do will be recognized as expenses immediately. Some will be cap capex and capitalized and amortized over the, the life of that loan. But you're going to reduce your cash, your, your your tax burden as a result of that as well. And of course, we like to defer when we do go to sell. We like to defer the taxes on our property, on our capital gains by using an, a very effective tool called a 1031 exchange. I won't get into the details of that today, uh, but we're going to roll that then tax free tax deferred into the next property or properties. And here again, it comes back to the gift that keeps on giving. We are now buying more assets, more cash flow, more equity capture, more of that principal pay down, more assets that are appreciating. And so it goes. And so it goes faster and faster. That, that cash flow snowball, it, it, it builds up speed. It goes faster and faster. You, you learn how to re-leverage those assets that you have. You learn how to effectively dis dispose of those and roll into new ones, right? And you go faster and faster because like Dell says, you can't get rich slow. So real estate, it really is the gift that keeps on giving through all of the ways that we talked about today. On top of that, let me name one other thing. Knowledge, learning, education as well is a gift that keeps on giving. All the things that we talked about today, I've learned over the years through Lifestyles Unlimited by going to the seminars, by starting with the free workshop. That's where I want you to start as well. We've got one more this year. Go register. I want you to go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. Get signed up. We've got that coming up in two days on Tuesday, the 29th in the evening. Free workshop, hour and a half. Do it from the comfort of your home. Freeworkshoplivestream.com. Hey, that's it for me for the year. I hope you've enjoyed listening. You're listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. My name is Andy Webb. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. You have a good morning. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.